Hey guys, welcome to the fourth and hopefully last episode of this series of rebuilding a single rail Speedfire transmission with a J-Type overdrive. So very quick story about this transmission. It was given to the owner of this car by somebody else who bought a Speedfire with this transmission in it, but they wanted to swap the transmission with something more modern. So they took this transmission out without even driving the car. Uh, they just drove it one in re once in reverse and that was all. Then they took the transmission out and it was given to Rob, who is the owner of this Spitfire. And he um, asked me if I can take it apart and rebuild it because it was obviously unknown condition. And that was a good idea because we found a few issues with the transmission. There was one bearing that was not good, but the overdrive in particular I didn't film that part. I rebuilt it off camera because I have another series of rebuilding a J-Type overdrive, which I can link here. But on this one, turns out that it was missing some of the parts. It was assembled, but inside internally, it was missing some parts. So anyway, I rebuilt it off camera. And in the first part, we explained how the shifter mechanism works because it's a single rail. It's different than what I've shown on the channel so far. And then in the second part, I showed how to check everything inside, end place of the gears, bushings, uh, tolerances, and all that. And then in the third part, we assembled the transmission and we mated it with the already rebuilt overdrive. So in this episode, we're going to put it on my jig, we're going to fill it with oil, and we're going to test whether the transmission works well, whether the overdrive engages and disengages, and if all that is good, then we're gonna swap the transmission in this car which is just a regular four-speed transmission so without further ado let's get crack a locking and when i say my testing rig i mean this crate with a motor that i took off from an old compressor and we have an adapter to go on the back of the transmission because we're going to feed the transmission from the back. Actually, this adapter is for TR6 and TR4 and TR3 transmissions. So for this one, I have a flange, but I don't have another pulley like that. So I'm going to have to modify the adapter a little bit. Anyway, so I'm going to put it on and we're going to see if it is going to build up pressure, if the gears shift and if they stay on, they don't pop out and all that. So let me get ready and I'll bring you back. Before we do the setup, I'm going to install the pressure gauge here because on J-Type it's at the bottom and it's harder when the transmission is down. So I'm going to install it now in this port, which actually when the transmission came, there was a long bolt here with multiple washers and I had to make my own bolt now with copper washer. So now it works. So we're going to remove this bolt and we're going to plug this pressure gauge, which I bought from Jay Hokam. Uh, here's his information. If you want to get in touch with him, uh, here is what he offers. He has a pressure gauge for A type and D type, which goes on top. This is for a J type. That's what it is. And this one for L and H, I have no idea what that is, but anyway, this is again his information. So let me put it on and then we're gonna lay the transmission flat. Okay, so my setup is ready here. Like the motor spins the transmission now. It's perfect, but as I was getting ready to start shooting, I realized that I don't have an overdrive switch. I mean, I bought a new one because this one is seized so i bought a new one like it works fine but i realized that there's nothing here inside that activates the switch in third and fourth gear i mean there was a cam there that now when i think about it that's probably the cam that was supposed to be there for that reason but um i i didn't pay attention to it where it was i just put it where it was before and it looks like it doesn't work. So now, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to take the top cover out again and see what's going on with that cam. It might need to be 180 positioned. So more work, 
before we start testing. Okay, so it was reversed, but I don't know, maybe it was me because I removed this pin by mistake. I don't think I needed to remove it, but uh, I removed it anyways, and maybe I put it 180, but maybe that's how it was. I don't want to dig into my videos now, but before I edit this video, I'm going to find the old footage and we're going to know whether I made the mistake or not. For now, I'm just going to plead innocent. No, I don't think I have a gasket for here. So, Permatex Ultra Black is what it is. So this is such a fine line here because we are in position here for third and fourth gear. This is for first and second, and this is for reverse. So the height of the switch needs to be adjusted so perfectly here. So we're gonna have to play with shims, I believe, but obviously it works when it's adjusted properly. Anyway, I'm gonna close it and we'll see. Yeah, I think I feel the resistance of the switch. Let's connect our multimeter. Okay, so this is reverse now. This somewhere here is third and fourth. And we're close. That's 0 0.05 ohms, which is basically short and first and second it's off so apparently it works okay cool all right what i did is i opened the cup here the filler cap but i'm gonna pour the oil from above because it's much easier and at some point we're gonna raise the front end so we feel the overdrive because i don't know if as it's sitting flat whether it's gonna feel or not, maybe, I don't know. So I don't know how much it takes, and by the way, this is the oil that I'm using, Valvoline non-detergent oil, and uh, it's good for low pressure hydraulic systems, and our overdrive is hydraulic, so that's what I like to use in overdrive transmissions. In non-overdrive, I use uh, MT90 by Redline, GL4. But here, I think it takes about one and a half liters. There you go. So we filled it. This is this much, and the other one wasn't full, so probably a little bit more than a quart. But, now we're gonna raise the front end. Just a little bit, in case there's any obstacle there to overcome it. That's it. And now I can add more, looks like it. So you see some people say that I don't have to do that. Well, apparently I have to. I don't know what we would, I don't know what I would do if it is in a car. I can't raise the front end unless I raise the front end of the car. But that took quite a bit more like at least, I don't know, maybe 200 more milliliters.
but when it's in a car and you drain it obviously there's a little bit of oil that remains in the overdrive that you don't drain okay for the electrical we have this fancy switch but it's broken or i don't know if these were soldered there i don't think they were i think this is somehow modified plus it doesn't stay like i pushed it in before it doesn't stay so rob bought something else fancy so they have the shifter and there's a hole here for the wires so we're going to remove this one later and we're going to install this but for now i'm just going to use the old wiring and i'm going to just connect it with uh, with a jumper wire so we're going to put this away for now here on off perfect switch so these are the uh, these two wires so when we close the switch we have a closed loop when we open the switch it's open loop and here we have the wiring harness that came with this transmission these are inside the car and green is powered with the ignition on and green with brown is the reverse light so let's follow the green if green is power and this power connects to the switch here on one side of the switch and then returns because there are two wires here right so it returns and goes this way and goes to one side of the reverse light switch which doesn't really matter which side but we're going to connect green to green so we have power now going to the switch when we go to reverse switch closes now power comes back here and now it goes to the green with brown and the green with brown goes back goes inside the car and goes to the reverse light to power the reverse light so this way the reverse circuit is complete but let's go back to the overdrive circuit so we powered up one side of this switch and now when we go in third and fourth gear this switch closes and if we connect the yellow with green wire on the other side of the switch now we have power coming to the other end of the wire which connects now to the shifter switch and when this switch is closed we have power returning through this wire and this wire connects to the yellow with purple and the yellow with purple goes back to the harness but it just makes a loop and then it comes back out and connects to the solenoid and this way we have power to the solenoid when this switch and this switch are closed if one of them is open then we have no power to the switch they both need to be closed and now all we need is only ground to the other side of the solenoid okay so i run a small ground wire to the other side of the solenoid and now i also run power here so that's my power supply i don't know if you see it here and we're gonna connect this to ground this is powered so we have to be careful not to touch this to the body and now if we put in fourth gear let's say and we connect this switch the overdrive clicks in neutral i guess in neutral it's gonna click too because of the shape of this cam right so in third it works in first doesn't work which is good in second it doesn't work which is good and most importantly let's see in reverse why can't i put it in reverse okay so that's reverse nope that's the most important part do you see there yeah 
doesn't work, work in reverse. But in fourth, it works. Okay, but one thing is important here to know that this is J-type, so you don't need a relay for the power because this solenoid draws very little power and just a regular switch is okay. The A-type overdrive, the solenoid has two circuits. One is pull wind circuit and one is holding circuit. The pull wind draws a lot of power but it is engaged only initially until the, the solenoid opens the operating valve. Then the pull wind circuit disconnects and only the holding circuit is remaining. And the holding circuit draws a little bit of power, but the pull wind circuit draws lots of power. So for that little one second operation of the solenoid, you need uh, a relay, otherwise you're gonna burn your switch. So anyway, the wiring is done. So one thing is left, I'm just going to hook this up somehow here to watch the pressure. I'll figure it out and we can uh, turn it on. All right, we have pressure gauge, we have oil inside, everything is closed, wiring is done. I'm going to put it in neutral and it spins freely, nothing is restricting it so we should be good now it might take a while to build in pressure uh, because all the oil passages and all the chambers inside dash pot and all that is empty so it might take a little bit to build to build the pressure we might need to operate the switch on and off multiple times the solenoid and eventually at some point it's going to build pressure the first time i rebuilt the j-type it scared me to death like it took probably two three minutes of turning around and playing with it until the pressure rised. I was ready to take the transmission apart one more time, but eventually it worked. So we're gonna turn it on here. Now you know where the cam is for the oil pump on the overdrive. Normally in neutral, when the car is stopped, uh, that cam is not operating because it's connected to the output shaft, right? And the, the output shaft is connected straight to the wheels. So if the wheels are turning, the cam is turning. In neutral or in gear or reverse, doesn't matter, the cam is turning. But when the car is sitting in neutral, it's not turning. In our case, we are turning the transmission from behind, so our cam is always turning, even in neutral. This means that we should build pressure even in neutral, no matter what. So, okay, let's turn it on. And it doesn't work. You think it's gonna work better if it's plugged in? There you go. It's a little pressure here on the motor. Okay, I'm gonna play with the motor a little bit, but I'm gonna let it run. Okay, 
Well, that's not a bad pressure. It's 330. I can definitely hear that the overdrive engages. That's overdrive engaged. I'm gonna test it with my performer too. I'm just gonna let it run for a while so everything warms up, including the solenoid, and you know, make sure that it disengages. Because in one transmission that I worked on, the solenoid was getting so hot that it was getting stuck and it doesn't disengage anymore. So that's why I wanna test this one like this. The pressure is a little bit up and down, but you know what, it's fine. Okay, so I have a piece of reflective tape here and with my digital tachometer I can read the RPM and I also have a piece of reflective tape here, right here, so I can read the RPM. So let's put it in fourth gear with the overdrive off and see if the two RPM match. Motor on and let's see what we have here. Oops. Yeah, this is my button. Okay, so we have 1500 RPM, 1509. Okay, let's see the other side. Fifth, same thing. 1517. Well, they are exactly the same, believe me. There's no way we have 2-3 RPM difference. It's probably error in the meter. But let's engage the overdrive now. Okay, it's engaged. So let's see if the RPM here drops. Yes. 12.08. So... 300 RPM difference. Let's do double check on the back now with the overdrive engage. Now with the overdrive engage, we might have a little bit more load so the RPM might drop, but not really. The motor is keeping up. So 15, 17, 15, 18. So we're good. So 1500 divided by 1200 well, that's easy, 1.25, right? Yeah, 12 plus 3 is 15, so 1.25 ratio, that's great. So, it works just fine. I'm just gonna let it run for a while. Uh oh, we have an oil leak. So, we have an oil leak over there, and it's interesting that it's coming from here, from this boat. Like, how come? Anyway, I'm going to remove this nut and I'm going to put the copper washer there. But how is it leaking from there? That's the only one. That over there is from when we filled it on, when we filled it on the other side and it dripped a little bit. Okay, so it's been working for 45 minutes so far and absolutely no issues. Every time I play with it, it engages disengages and all that i just have to fix this leak and then uh, we're gonna remove the we're gonna remove the pressure gauge we're gonna put the plug and we're ready to install it in the car yay exciting okay next day and the car is in the air we have the transmission cover removed and i just wanted to show you here i'm not really sure what's going on here whether this is extended or it was cut i think normally this tunnel ends somewhere here but they added this piece i have no idea why but what i've seen also on a d-type overdrive car they actually made a cut on the existing tunnel and removed the piece for easy installation of the transmission and then they put the piece back and they put strips of metal all over and they screwed each side and, and that worked really well actually I should have taken a picture of that because when you have a d-type overdrive transmission then that extends it makes it a little bit longer and then you need a shorter drive shaft here for j-type the length 
should be exactly the same. We're gonna confirm that when we have the transmission out. But I just wanted to show you this. Anyways, the rear mount is gonna have to be modified. We have some brackets that uh, Rope purchased with the for the overdrive. So we're gonna see how everything is gonna work. But anyway, I'm gonna take the transmission out now. For that, we need to remove obviously the rear mount, all the bolts on the bell housing. On the other side, we have the clutch slave cylinder and the uh, speedometer cable and the wires for the reverse switch. Anyway, we have an issue over there when the car is running, the exhaust is rattling. And this exhaust I installed a few months ago and I don't think it was touching at the time, but after that somehow it saddled and now it's touching. So we're gonna have to figure out how to modify that, even though that's the downpipe, which is basically impossible to modify. Not sure what we're gonna do there. All right, it's another day and the transmission is mounted. I mean, it's in place with few bolts on the bell housing, but as you can see here, we encountered a problem. So this drive shaft can't collapse any more than that. That's as far back as it can go. And the rope was under the impression, and maybe I should have made my own research, but I didn't. But somebody told rope that the J-type overdrive doesn't change the length of the transmission and the existing drive shaft is going to work. However, after I realized that it doesn't work, I went and I did my own research and I figured that actually the drive shaft for overdrive and non-overdrive units on a Spitfire is different. So one option is to take this drive shaft out, take it to a drive shaft shop, and they can shorten it and balance it and do all that. The other option is to buy a new one. So another thing is after 75, so 75 to 80 Spitfire, they started uh, using a CV joint here in the front. At the back of the drive shaft, there's still a U-joint, but here they started using a CV joint. And this CV joint is not serviceable or replaceable. Once it's gone, you have to throw the entire drive shaft away. This one, I don't think it's bad, but the uh, question is whether we want to invest into this drive shaft and shorten it and balance it and all that, just to find out that in a certain amount of time, the, U, the, the CV joint is gone and it is garbage. On the other hand, the new shafts that they sell right now, all the suppliers, they don't use CV anymore. They have U-joint in the front as well. Even for the 75 to 80 Spitfires, they give you a U-joint, which I think is the better option anyway. So uh, I spoke to Rob and he actually uh, acted very quick and he ordered a new drive shaft, overdrive one, which is a little bit shorter than the regular one. So that's gonna come in the next few days. He also ordered a new speedometer cable because that doesn't reach now. We need a few more inches. I believe the original one, no, the original one is actually a split. There's two speedometer cables because they go through, through this unit here, which is, I don't know what. It is, I believe, a service counter. So it counts how many kilometers you drive. Even at some point it lights a dash light to tell you that it's time for service. Of course, it's been eliminated for a long time. And now actually the suppliers sell you a one piece speedometer cable from the speedometer all the way to the transmission. However, the standard one is 48 inches, I believe. And they also sell you an overdrive one, which is 54. So Rob ordered that as well. So soon we're gonna have a new drive shaft and a new speedometer cable. So that's just for your information to know that if you're installing an overdrive, no matter whether it's D-type or J-type on a Spitfire transmission, you're gonna definitely need a short drive shaft. So I have no other option now but to take this drive shaft out. For that, I'm gonna have to take the exhaust down. But we said that for the exhaust, we need to do some modifications because it touches here and there. So uh, we have to take it out anyways. So I'm gonna take all this out and I'm gonna put the, this car away until we have a drive shaft here. 
unfortunately I can't do more work than that now. Okay, I put all the bolts on the bell housing now and tighten them. I put the clutch slave on, remove the drive shaft, remove the exhaust completely from underneath so it's out of the way. And now I can finally lower the transmission because until now you see it was sitting on this piece of wood higher than the drive shaft. So now that we can lower it, we can actually work on the rear mount here because that needs to be modified too. But I'm gonna take a jack and I'm gonna put it under there to lift the transmission up so I can take this piece of wood out and then we're gonna talk a little bit more about the rear mount. And this by the way is the drive shaft. You see the U joint in the back, but a CV joint in the front. And if you pull this out, you will see there's a rubber here. And behind the rubber, there's like a, a CV joint, you know. It's very simple, but actually genius uh, joint. Whoever invented it, it's fantastic. Anyway, I'm not going to talk about it, but just so you know, this is how far it goes it can go more than that it expands more than that but it can collapse more than that and we need it collapsed i believe by an inch so okay so talking about rear mounts this is how it used to work so we have the rubber mounts here and they fit it into this i don't know if i'm gonna be able to do it with one hand but yeah they fit it like that on this mount and this mount was fitting on this plate here and of course the holes here ended right under this mount however now with the J-type our mount is all the way back here on these two holes so we have this adapter let me take it out this adapter that fits like that now the rear end of the transmission is raised a lot on the jack over there normally it's much lower so it's gonna end up something like that but still how are we gonna mount anything here well this plate is supposed to work for that so if you look this plate here the holes are in the rear end of the plate and these holes are offset to the front and this plate is the other way around the holes are in the front end so here are the bolts right there so that should fit well i don't i still don't think it's gonna fit very well but it should fit because that's how it is designed so what that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna take this plate out from there i'm gonna mount this one i'm gonna mount this here and then we're gonna try to drop it down and see if these holes are gonna match these holes okay i have the plate just dropped in there the bolts are still not tight this mount i tightened and i made sure it's a little bit offset if you look at the piece here so i made sure that it is offset forward because i have the feeling that as i lower it down these are not gonna line up with these but let's see okay here we go They might line up. Okay. Well, I told you they were gonna line up. They line up perfectly, actually. So we're good. You were just stressing me out. Anyway, so that's it. I'm gonna put bolts here now. I'm gonna tighten these as well. These are tight. And um, we're gonna wait for our new drive shaft and the uh, speedometer cable so we can finish this job okay it's a few days later and we have a new drive shaft so rob ordered it rush order it came to me pretty fast so now we're gonna unpack it i wanted just to compare it before i unpack it to make sure it is the correct length and uh, this time we're gonna have the car on the lift last time i didn't put it on the lift because taking out the transmission and all that it required an engine support and it wasn't gonna work well on the lift but now since we're gonna be doing the uh, drive shaft and the exhaust makes sense to put it on the lift so i'm gonna get it up and we're gonna start crackalacking again
Okay, so here is the drive shaft unpacked. There's a weight here because it got balanced, I guess. Non-greasable U-joints, which is okay. The old ones weren't greasable too. The splines here, the sliding part, is greasable though, and it's greased. I just spread it apart and it is like nicely lubricated there. See? So you see this one extends and becomes as long as this one, but this one can't compress anymore. That's as short as it could be. So like I said, the CV joint is not available anymore. And even the new shaft supplied for later Spitfires are with U-joints front and back, even though originally they had CV joints. We also have the speedometer cable, 54 inches, I just measured it, so it should be long enough now. The car is on the lift, let's install everything. All right, so the drive shaft is installed, the exhaust is installed underneath, I had to play with it a little bit to re-bend. I have a adapter piece here between the downpipe and the actual exhaust so i had to actually cut and bend and weld this piece but it worked anyway the speedometer cable is installed i think it's a good time to test drive the car now and i was even thinking to install the new knob here the gear shifter and uh, put the button the little switch for the overdrive but look what's happening here so this i think is designed for earlier transmissions that have smaller threads here and they don't have the wiring going inside through the center so i guess this shifter is special for overdrives so we already have the wires coming through the center of the of the road here they give you a hole on the side so you can run the wires right next to the road and then fish them through here so that's good you, we can just fish them through the center here and not use this hole on the side which is great but the problem is that the threads inside this bushing are too small they're not gonna fit this at all so i'm not really sure what we're gonna do here i think i'm gonna have to oh it actually comes out <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to take out this bushing and cut different threads so it can fit here. But you know what, we're gonna do all that after we assemble the cover and carpet and everything. We're gonna leave this as a last job. For now, I just might pull out the wires and hook up the switch so we can go for a test drive because I don't wanna install the cover before I test drive the car makes sense right okay we have the switch installed just like this and it worked i can hear the solenoid clicking when i turn the ignition on and i put in forward gear and i play with the switch seats are not mounted like it is a mess but i want to test drive it before i do all that so let's go for a test drive as it should the reverse works as well and before it was super noisy and it was grinding the reverse gear on this car that was another transmission right so
now it works fantastic okay so let's go assemble the rest of the car well, look at this the new knob the special knob fits on the old shifter no problem see it works well here but the new shifter because the wires go through it is much bigger threads so there's an option to pull out the old shifter from the other transmission and use it here but then the wires need to run next to the shifter here while here we can make it work perfectly even with this adapter here so this is an adapter that when you position it in certain way this comes up and tightens against against the thing so i think we can, that's what we're gonna do i'm gonna pull out this bushing it's pretty easy to come out and i'm gonna drill the hole bigger and i'm gonna tap threads with this size all right so the interior is assembled and the last thing to do is to install a new knob with the switch on top the switch has three prongs and you can see two are white and one is uh, bronze or brass or whatever color and these two the white ones are the actual switch if we don't have the third prong this is our switch we have open or closed circuit between these two the third prong is for this little led here and this led works when there's power on the middle prong and ground on the bronze prong so there's two ways to connect this we can connect it so the led is always on when the ignition is on or we can connect it in a way that the led is on when the overdrive is on and i think that's what we're gonna do so what we're gonna do is we know that here we have power on one of these wires uh, the brown i believe is power and the blue one is when the circuit is closed the power returns and goes to the uh, solenoid so we can connect our power here to the outer one and the blue one to the middle one this way when the switch is off there's not going to be power to the middle one and when the switch is on then that's going to close the circuit and now the power is going to transfer also to the middle one and we're going to put a ground on the yellow bronzy whatever one and that's going to activate our led here if we do it the other way around if we put the permanent power in the middle and the blue one at the end the overdrive is still gonna work on and off but we're gonna have our led always on and we don't want that right so um, that's how we're gonna do it for ground i was initially gonna do this so this bushing we can we can put on this bushing We could put this bushing on thread it in there and then on top i was thinking of installing this washer that i soldered a wire to and that was gonna be for my ground but it turns out i don't have much room inside here after i can do it but i have to put a nut on top to hold it after this washer i have to put this nut here to hold my washer there so i figured i can do something much easier and simpler i stripped this wire a lot so i can just put it in this channel like this and just pinch it at the end between this surface here and the bottom of the bushing and then i have the three wires that i need here so i can make the switch work like this now this is my ground here you see so now we can cut this off put a spade connector like this and then we can uh, plug in the switch okay so based on this switch the old broken switch this says in out i guess this is on this is off so on is 
towards the back. So that's what, how we're gonna do our switch as well. Everything is connected here. The ignition is on and now we are off. So the light remains off in any position. But if we wanna turn it on, there you go. I heard the solenoid clicking and the light is on. If we go in neutral, it's gonna remain on because remember how that cam in on the shifter in the transmission inside is it also activates the switch in neutral between third and fourth but if we push it to the left yeah there you go it turned off in this position it is activated so in third it remains on in fourth it remains on but in second even if the switch is on our overdrive is off so nothing happens here but in four in fourth there you go so that's perfect that's how we want it okay so we just need to install the knob now i'm gonna unplug the switch and see how all these connectors are gonna fit inside the bow i have no idea but we're gonna figure it out okay that's what it looks like when it is installed properly I had to actually remove the spade connectors, there wasn't enough room for them and I soldered the wires directly to the switch. Unfortunately that's how it needs to be, but now it, it works just fine. So let's go for another test drive. second and third I only use it in fourth anyway So now I can call Rob and tell him that his car is ready. I'm sure he's going to be excited. He's been waiting for six months, I think, since he got this overdrive until it is finally installed on his transmission, on his car. So he's going to be excited. So that's going to be everything for today from me, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And this video is helpful for you in case you're doing uh, the same job. So if you like this video or in general, if you like my content and, and you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing because that helps me. You can also consider becoming a Patreon or support the channel in a different way. There are multiple ways described in the description of this video. So if you would like to support me a little bit, that's gonna be highly appreciated. But even if you just subscribe and share, that's also a big help for me. So once again, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.